Good morning. I am Karen Strauss. I am an IGCSE, AS, and A-level chemistry teacher uh, here in the sunny state of Florida in the United States. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Okay. Uh, I'm so glad we could all get together, uh, together and talk about everything and be able to see what is happening. Um, I'm going to present today um, a couple of things that I've done in my classroom, um, going over specifically classroom safety measures, teacher generated videos, uh, teacher, uh, student led teaching, what I call professor of the day, and make your own examiner reports. In other words, example candidate responses, and let's see how those work. So um, here in the United States, let me give you a little background. Uh, like everybody, last spring of 2020, we all went on lockdown. So during the, our spring break time, I had to quickly scramble and learn a new way to teach my students the rest of either AS chemistry, IGCSE, or what are we going to do to the end of the year? Because for my AS students, we were not completely, uh, it was not shut down. I thought for so, quite some time they were going to still have to take, come in, take the test, practical. Nobody knew what was going on. Um, I ended up teaching fourth quarter of last year on Zoom, like a lot of other people, but had to teach myself what, what the heck is Zoom? Uh, and if I never hear the word again too soon, it'd be great. Anyway, come the summer, we were still on shutdown and we're trying to figure out how to open schools if we could open schools. Here in the United States, the schools are uh, governed by the individual state. So it's up to the individual governor what was going on. In my state of Florida, the governor decided we were gonna go back to school but he decided to leave the option of whether to go back in person to the parents, which I, I thought was a great step. Kudos to my governor. Let the parents decide what is best for their family and their students. So teachers were going back and that left us with kind of a hybrid type model, model for the year. We were going to have students face-to-face -face with us in the classroom and students on remote on Zoom concurrently. So this was happening at the same time. It was not a face-to-face -face or a Zoom. It was both simultaneously. So let's go figure out how we're going to put this together. All right. The first thing we had to do is how we're going to hold the face-to-face -face safely in the classroom. So what was going on? The county that I am in came up with a set of county-wide rules. Everyone had to have a mask on at all times. From the moment you enter the gate, you're on campus to the time you leave. The only time it could be off was be during lunch uh, when they're socially distanced. They also purchased several of these large plastic screen dividers that would put between the students in the classroom because space-wise, there was no way we could get the students six feet apart. That just, you can't change the size of the building. This is what it is and we were to limit the movement of students wherever possible. When it came to my classroom, I had implemented my own set of rules. For example, bell work, which used to be come in and answer this question, let's get the brain going and get us focused for today's lesson, now turned into washing hands. Exit tickets, where we wrap up what's going on, now came into cleaning the classroom, Lysoling everything down. I also said there was to be no sharing of goggles, nothing that was going on one student's face was going to be passed to another student, limit the sharing of equipment where things were being touched, and for one specific lab in chemistry called a qualitative analysis, I insisted students wear gloves. All right, so let's take a trip into my classroom and see what this school year looked like. Here you can see uh, the beginning of the, the day uh, I bought, Tons of soaps, they're at every station all over the classroom. I think I even got two different scents, you know, so the kids could go crazy, which one do they like better? And the kids would come in the first thing and they drop the backpack and they wash their hands. You can see whenever I break out the camera, a lot of the other kids in the background just have to get into the picture because they, they love pictures of themselves, they're so cute. 
The next thing is that every lab table or bench, I put out a bucket here that contained everything they're going to need, including a spray bottle of Lysol, which was what I chose to use um, after trying to make sure what didn't interact with kids or other chemicals in the classroom. This, after a lot of research, worked the best for me. And like any other science room, when you have a chemical, make sure spray bottles are labeled so you know what it is. So it's clearly labeled. The kids know what's happening here. Sharing. Well, I got to say, after teaching, what is it, six years of AS chemistry? I'm losing track now. Uh, I have got quite a bit of glassware, ring stands, retort stands, uh, uh, you name it, I have it. Thank you, Cambridge, because they've always... You've always had to have a certain amount per student for that practical at the end of the year. But over the years, I have acquired a lot. So sharing wasn't an issue for me. It was for some other teachers that were non-Cambridge teachers. They were just following state standards. Um, but I found a lot of teachers this year didn't even do labs. They were a little too afraid. But we plugged on uh, because to me, the labs are the fun part. I, I, I got into chemistry and the sciences because I love the labs. Okay, what else? Uh, this is the qualitative analysis bucket that I was talking about. This is a, a specific lab for AS where the students get some unknown compound and through a series of tests, either prescribed by Cambridge or they have to come up with the test, they have to determine what this compound, what the cation and anion is. And the bucket gives them a variety of chemicals that they may use for this analysis. <coughs> Excuse me. Well, here I have a bucket like this per every two students. So as they're constantly touching the bottles, opening it, cutting things, putting it back, touching it again for the next thing, it was too difficult to wipe everything down every time a student touched it. So I had students wear gloves for this one lab. Goggles, again, the school was very good to me this year. They wanted to keep this level of chemistry going. So they purchased a set of safety glasses. They were not the chemistry goggles where they were all the way around where fumes couldn't get in, but they were something just over the eyes. And at this point this year, anything is better than nothing. This is what we were dealing with. So to keep kids from sharing anything, I purchased a bunch of these plastic shoebox type things in a variety of colors, a different color per every period. And then I've got each of the tables and the period labeled on there. So the students would get a pair of goggles. I gave them a Ziploc bag that had their name on it. They put the goggles in the bag into the bucket and they were put over here on shelves that I brought in. Again, this takes up a lot of space, but this is the year. This is what we needed to do to keep this year going on. Uh, when they were done, they would wash off their goggles, put it back in the Ziploc, put it back in the bucket, and they go back on the shelves for the next time. The other thing that I had the students do was leave a spare mask inside their bucket, also with their goggles. This is in case anything spilled and got on their mask, wafting of chemicals, you never know what could happen. The last thing I would want is a student to walk around all day with a mask that had some sort of chemical on it. So we always had a spare backup one that I kept here just in case. Buckets, buckets, buckets. This became my lifesaver this year. I've always used them, but I did more this year because in the past students would go into the cabinets, they would get the equipment they would need, they would set up their lab and go about, you know, create, completing the lab. Well, I had to limit the movement of students. So I ended up taking everything and putting it into the bucket and the bucket went on the table. So the students got everything out and they put it back in the bucket at the end of the day. It took a lot more work on my part, a lot more cleanup on my part, but it, it kept the kids from mixing with each other and all huddled over at the same cabinet at the same time. Again, it's this year, what are we going to do to keep it going? And this is what I chose to do. All right. The second thing I wanna talk about is teacher generated videos. There are tons and tons and tons of wonderful videos on YouTube or out there on the internet, but I like my videos only because I can get them to pay attention to things that I specifically want them to. Now, here is one I made over the summer before school started. 
about 35 minutes long, in which I went through an entire AS titration. This was this one was geared for AS, not the IGCSE. I went through everything from the setup all the way through. Did they showed them the burette, showed them my results, did the data table, went walked them through the calculations, an entire titration that was going on. And this is, I posted this onto our school platform. We use something called Blackboard. You can see off to the side, I've got the bottom here and this page goes way down, all the different standards. I've got a tab for practicals. I got a tab for mock exam. I got a tab for, I got a tab for everything here. But I would post all these videos under the lab practical tab and I had it further divided into titrations, enthalpy, QA, crucible work, rate reactions, gas, everything that I could think of that we would do, I created a video. This allowed students that were in school and remote to be able to go back and watch it anytime, rewatch it as many times as they want to before going on. Um, again, don't be afraid of making your own videos. Again, there are great ones out there but I really wanted them to see where everything is and where everything is housed in my classroom. What's going on? Here is one for IGCSE. What is this thing here? This way. IGSE testing for cations. Uh, I put behind me on the whiteboard, a full kind of a spreadsheet where you have your unknown, test it with sodium hydroxide. Here's what you should see. Test it with the ammonia here. Here's the results you should be seeing showing them the test tube. Um, this is what's going on at the beginning. This was especially good for the remote students because I could really walk them through every single step. This is what I mean by adding a little bit of the reagent and then excess, adding excess sodium hydroxide. Well, how much is excess? I could show them, you're just squeeze, fill up that bottle. Is it going away? Is it soluble or is it insoluble? And I could also review some of the solubility rules at this time. All right, again, by my making my labs, uh, the videos myself, I could focus specifically on what I wanted to do. I could walk through a Cambridge practical, make sure that they're looking at the practical, highlighting, circling is like, all right, here's my given information. This is what I'm trying to find. Have them go through and highlight, underline everything. Then make sure they create the data tables exactly the way I want them to do. How to set up the equipment because the students that are remote, the day they come in to take this practical, they might know how to do the calculations, but the actual set up, how do I put this in here? How far does the crucible go above the flame? Um, how, what to do with all this? Make sure that the burette, the tip of it is not inside the conical flask, it's not too far above. Going through the exact setup, you don't really get that a lot with the online videos. You don't get that kind of information with a lot of the um, online, um, uh, uh, what's it called, the practicals or the labs. You can get those uh, virtual type labs. There's a lot of them. And I've used a lot of those with my students also. This is making my videos is it with the other virtual labs. Um, I go through tips and tricks. And then when something goes wrong, which especially if it's their first time they're going to do it is for the ACE practical, something will go wrong. What do they need to do? So let me show you one of my quick little videos, just part of it. Um, again, no Academy Awards or anything for what's going on here. Okay, let's start setting up the burette so we can do this titration. I've got my burette in place, everything I'm going to need. Uh-oh, the burette does not look level. This is on an angle, it's slanted. Make sure the burette is fit snugly into the holder. There are little divots in here, which will hold on to the burette nicely. Now that it is straight up and down, I'm going to go ahead, use my funnel, and I'm short, I need to get up here, and add my FA to the top. Oh, that's so a great view. Pouring. So I'm filling it up. No, 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 no. Oh, no, I forgot to close the burette. No, make sure that you close.
All right, as we can see, not any Academy Awards. It wasn't great, but it's the little things like this. Is the burette set up correctly? Is it level? You need to get up out of the chair to be able to fill the burette. Often I have students that are just kind of sitting down. It's like, if you need to get on a step stool to do this, get up on the step stool. You need to be at eye level, making sure the stopcock's close. What, what is happening? These are the little things that I include in my videos that you would not normally find online. Um, and then I also make videos here going through the, uh, the questions, the answers, going through the practical step by step. The mark schemes are fabulous, but there are times going through the calculations that I always have to look at the mark schemes. What is Cambridge talking about? My students also have a hard time reading them, especially at the beginning. So I like to actually do the labs um, along with them. And then I show them, this is my work. This is my handwriting. Where did I get this information? Well, it's given, it's written right here. What's going on? No, you don't have to put your answer in scientific notation. I happen to enjoy, that's the way I do it. We go through every step of the calculation. All right, once we get through with all of this, then I'd like to go into what I call student-led teaching or professor of the day. We're here, once we've gone through how to do the labs and everybody knows what they're doing, it's set up and we're actually ready to go. At this point, I turn it over to my students. Um, here is the lovely Isabella. You can see this is my laptop and my external speaker sitting right here. It goes right to the table with one of my in-school students. And now she is running this. She's going through whatever this study group is for this one. Um, here is an IGCSE at the beginning of the year. We were separating salt, sand, and iron filings. And I've got the lovely Christy here. Uh, she's going through with my students at home. Now, you can see the students on Zoom have a full copy of the lab practical. I posted it to Blackboard so they can either be looking at that at another computer, they can have it printed out, um, they have it access to them so they know exactly what she's doing. Christy is going through um, the setup. You can see she set up the ring stand, she's got the crucible here, um, how everything is going on. She's got the water bottle in her hand here. She was in her element. If this child does not become a teacher, it is a missed calling because she's ready to take over my job. She loved letting the other kids know how to do the lab. Not all students do well with this. Some of them are just very quiet and they get nervous, but I think it is good practice for the in-school students because if you can explain what's going on, then I know that you have mastered it also. Uh, here's another IGCSE. This was an enthalpy lab. Uh, they had already finished. Here's the uh, styrofoam cup thermometer. They've got my computer here, lab in front of them. They've already finished up the actual lab and now they're going through the calculations and walking the students at home with what should have happened here. Um, David did a great job. Braden is praying I don't call on him, but he's going on to AS level chemistry next year. So I'll get him definitely. Uh, here's an AS level qualitative analysis. The lovely Elvira is going through uh, the steps. You can see she's having to show the test tube to them what's happening. This is not ideal, I'll admit it, because sometimes it's very difficult as you start to put things towards the camera. Well, where is the camera versus the middle of the computer? Is it focused? Is it not focused? Um, it, it's a learning curve for all of us, but it, it allows the students at home to ask her questions. They can tell her, can you move it out, move it over here? What are you seeing? Uh, sometimes seeing that it is um, soluble, that it goes is difficult at home, but we're trying to make it work. It's the best we have at the moment. Oh, here was a fun day. This is my AS students this year. We're doing a polymerization making nylon. This is something I normally do with my IGCSE students, but because we were on lockdown last spring, we didn't get a chance to do this. So we had some fun this day. You can see somebody up here uh, standing on a stool, a lot of contests over who could make the longest strand of nylon. They had a good time here and you can see multiple periods. I think I got four ACE classes. There's all over my computer makes it, I always have to go find where my computer is at the end of the day. Here's an IGCSE electroplating going on. 
Uh, Milton is over here showing them the setup of the alligator clamps. Again, they have a copy of the lab is on Blackboard. The kids are seeing it. This gives them a chance to ask questions. When you're doing just a virtual lab, there's no way to ask questions. There's no interaction. Everything works perfectly on a virtual lab. Ah, oh, nobody spills anything, nothing gets broken, which we all know in a real lab practical, all of these things happen. And the kids, I think, need to see that it's not the perfect virtual world. This is what actually happens. Uh, here's another IGCSE. This was an acid base indicator. We were getting ready for titrations to see where an endpoint was going to be, where you stopped a titration with um, different indicators. Ronnie is running this class. He's one that was not as good as interacting with the students at home. Uh, he was so focused on doing serial dilutions here to get everything from a pH 1 to a pH 12 to do this. Um, but at times the remote students need to, they need to ask questions. They, I mean, he's got my external speaker. We can hear when they log in and they ask a question. They need to be able to be responsible for their learning here. Of course, I've always posted pictures of the results uh, on Blackboard so the kids knew what they should have seen. Because for this one specifically, it's kind of hard to move the computer over to see what happened with Ronnie's work. Um, here was an IGCSE titration getting set up. Again, multiple periods, so I got lots of different shots. What's happening here? Uh, they had fun with this. Here is an AS level enthalpy. Uh, so the kids online, they have the live practical. The only thing Eric was allowed to tell them was mass. So he gave them the mass of whatever the compound was that was being measured and temperatures. After that, everybody at home, the remote students had to make the same data table. They had to do all the calculations. The only thing they could get from him was information or the data to put in the data tables. Okay, now if you're going to do this, I learned the hard way, I would recommend putting a piece of plastic over top of your computer. Sodium hydroxide in computers do not mix well. This is what has happened to mine when somebody went a little crazy on squirting the NaOH. Yeah, I can't wait to see what the IT guys say to me at the end of the year when they get my computer back. Okay, one disaster at a time. Uh, here's just more of my classroom. Again, I said early on that we have these plastic screens. They divide the students. Everybody has the mask on, but they're still working. They're able to collaborative work with each other. Um, uh, there was just doing some calculations, some work here. But again, I try to get the kids as working together as possible. And when students are remote, again, my computer is right there with them. So my students at home are not always in a breakout room with just other remote students. They're gonna be in breakout rooms with the students that are in school so that they were talking trying to make it feel as normal as possible for these other, for the remote kids. Um, here we've got going on the book, they're working. You can see my Lysol bottle here, getting ready to squirt everything down. Hopefully they've accomplished something and not just playing on their cell phones. Hmm. Okay, here, okay, Clavin's here. This one has now made my video montage of what could go wrong in a lab. Uh, thankfully, We've always, for an enthalpy, put the styrofoam cup in a beaker to weight it down so that when you leave the thermometer in it, it doesn't tip over because styrofoam cup is not steady. We've also discovered this year, which I assumed we all knew, but I, they didn't, that a thermometer can poke a hole at the bottom of the styrofoam cup, thereby all the contents of this enthalpy lab would have been on your lap without the, um, the aid of the beaker. Thank goodness for the beaker here. What is going on here? All right, here is another qualitative analysis lab going on. They're working here. And then what I also do in my class, and I have done this since the uh, very first year of teaching AS level chemistry, is at the halfway point, we have um, midterm exams here in the United States. So we get extended period of time. I think it's 100 minutes. We get to give them an exam and most teachers give a written test. I have always chosen for my AS students to give them a full Cambridge practical. 
I don't know what this one was. This may be, this was, pick, these pictures are from two years ago because they don't have the masks on, but maybe like a 2016, whatever. I just pulled one at random. All right, here's what we're doing. And I do this at the halfway point for them to uh, understand some time management. Those two hours will fly by, if, especially if they're doing a titration over and over. They've got to be able to figure, watch their time, how to get through everything, giving themselves time to do the calculations, graph and everything else. It's not two hours to just do the lab. It's everything. Um, it also gets the jitters out because now all of a sudden it's like, oh, this is the first lab. I, they're getting so nervous. Um, this gets the jitters out. They're a little more comfortable so that when June comes around, they've already done a full lab practical. Uh, um, I grade these. We go through the mark scheme. Um, usually students do pretty well. We get most students passing. There'll be one or two that do not. This year, I did the exact same thing. Uh, I had out of my remote AS students, most of them came back in. I was got a period in which I could have just the remote students and there was a student per table. I could socially distance them. They you know, had nobody else around. The parents allowed them and administration allowed them to come back on campus to do this midterm exam. The ones that came back, most of them passed. The ones that did not pass, there were some easy little fixes like, a data table wasn't drawn correctly. Things that are very difficult for me to see how they're doing with them being remote. But I was really impressed with them. And again, this was only halfway. They did this the first week in January. We have till the end of June. So we have a lot more time to figure out what's happening. Anybody who has not, why uh, is this going away? seeing what a classroom looks like after an AS chemistry practical. This is what my room looks like. It's a disaster. I mean, you can see everything. You can see I've got the buckets with different students' names on them, where all their equipment goes. Everything's QA buckets. All They're crammed in here. It is absolutely insane. By the time this is done, I really just want to set fire to my classroom and start all over again, because this, this is quite the mess. Okay, the last thing I want to kind of cover is what I call making your own uh, example candidate responses. Cambridge is phenomenal in the fact that we all have access to example candidate responses. Um, and I recommend going through these with your students. Go through what was a fabulous uh, response, an okay response, and one that need, you know did not get as many marks as it should have been. And I do this with my own students' work. I take photographs of their work and I make a PowerPoint because it's the easiest for me to share with the remote students, a PowerPoint. And I mix it up from current student work and previous student work because really what we're doing is evaluating them. We can look at this as a whole class to see what's going on. We could break out by table or breakout groups, um, even with the kids on remote. And we start to look and analyze what is happening. So we want to see what did this student do well? What do they need to improve on? And again, my students came up with most of this looks great. They missed the centimeters cubed here. So that would have been a point. And they missed the two decimal places here, even though they had them here. It had to have been all of them. So this is a quick, easy fix. Another one here, got the two decimal places. It all looks absolutely fabulous, except for reading the directions. Cambridge said, clearly show how you got this. And reading seems to be an issue with some of my students. Here's another one. Again, nobody knows who this is, but they don't even know if it's this year or years in past because I keep large um, groups together. But again, they're going through, they're being the examiners. What would they have marked off on this? And again, two decimal places here. Oh boy, this was an interesting, this was early on in the year. This was two years ago. So I can actually say this child did pass AS level chemistry. But on this, this was graphing. We needed to do a lot of work on grafting uh, when they come into AS level chemistry. They wanted to extrapolate where lines intersect. <laughs> it needed some work. So we had a good time make, going through this and seeing what was happening here. And then penmanship. 
I always want to send a box of chocolate or something off to the graders. Love you guys, the graders, whoever take on handling grading all of this, because I, I don't know how to read my own students' handwriting. And it's fun when you pull them up and ask, hey, Johnny, what does this say? And they don't know. So getting after them about their penmanship, they're just going so fast, especially this looks like this was a practical here. I tell you what it says, but I really don't know. It's a mystery. I hope some of this was helpful for a lot of you. I, I am very blessed the fact that I did have a lot of my students were in school, so face to face, so they got to do this. The ones that were remote, most of them came in one time and they got to do that midterm exam. They at least one time physically did something. Um, the others, I'm just, I, I think they can do it. They're bright kids. They really can do this. We have the short answer. We got the multiple choice. The practical is one part of it. I just wish they could all do it one time to get rid of the jitters. But um, again, call on each other. We're all here to help each other. Uh, um, bless these kids are doing a fabulous job. And thank you for joining me.